So you're trying to get to sleep, right? Tossing back and forth, and it only feels harder with that constant thought, I just really need to get some sleep. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, it makes sense with around one third of Australians experiencing insomnia at some stage in their life. So have you ever listened to some music to help you get to sleep? Today, we're asking a researcher in music psychology about how music can help people sleep better. But specifically, we're going to be talking about how different music genres can help. Turns out it's not just Beethoven that can help set your mind at ease. We're joined by Thomas Dixon, a musical psychology researcher from the University of New South Wales. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Marlene. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you for joining us. So, How does listening to music before bed help us sleep? How does it actually work? Yeah, so in my research, what we found was that music can help people who are feeling distracted. Uh, Sorry, music can act as a distraction to stop people who are feeling stressed or have anxiety towards sleep. Of course, music is very relaxing, so it can help people relax. And finally, music is also really enjoyable, so it can turn the experience and dread of going to sleep, if you have insomnia, into an enjoyable experience. So you look forward to go to sleep, which in turn can help you fall asleep. Now, when I think of music to sleep with, personally, I'm thinking of like classical music or world music, but is that just an assumption or a generalization that I have? Yeah, that's not necessarily the case. So in our research, we found that individuals can actually fall asleep to a wide variety of different music. It seems to be more about your relationship with the music that matters more than the style or genre. But that being said, there is some reason to the genres that you explained. So those genres do have tendencies or can have tendencies to be more relaxing with things such as sustained notes, having more emphasis in lower frequencies, and also they tend to be less danceable. So we saw in our research that uh, lots of people who listen to highly danceable music struggle to fall asleep compared to those that listen to relaxing music. Yeah, that makes sense that it's not a one-size-fits-all. I have to admit I had to completely contain my laughter when I um, I had a look at some of the the songs that were in the research. Um, So for listeners at home, there's uh, basically a a table of successful songs and unsuccessful, and I saw that uh, a couple of the unsuccessful songs were like, Fergalicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can I can see it has a quite an upbeat, <laughs> upbeat, upbeat song there. So you mentioned before there some of the kind of uh, techniques in songs that makes them good for sleep. Mm. So can you can you go through again, um, kind of like what techniques makes a good song to fall asleep to? Yeah. So um, moving away first from the music itself, I think. The important part is our relationship. So if you find music too distracting, you won't fall asleep to it. And that was the case with the Fergie. I imagine the person who was listening to that song by Fergie found that the music was too distracting and hindered them from going to sleep. But on the other end of the spectrum, if the music isn't distracting enough, then it won't. uh, you can have stressful thoughts that pop up, which can hinder your ability to fall asleep. So it's about finding music that's the ideal level of distraction. So when we look at something like danceable rhythms, which is what I was talking about before, so thinking about, for example, music you might dance to or what we might call stimulating music versus relaxing music, if the music's too stimulating, it would be too distracting. So if you're listening to it and you're trying to sleep, but you're tapping your foot, that's probably not a good sign. (laughs) Whereas if you are sitting there lying in bed and you find the music engaging but still relaxing, that's ideal. So some of the other features we found outside of being non-danceable was that there's a tendency for music to have what we call a lot of darkness. Now, put simply, that means more lower frequencies. The music that was better for sleep tended to have more deeper sound. For example, you could think of like low, low range piano as opposed from the higher notes on a piano. Another thing we found was what musicians would call staccato wasn't associated with music that helps people sleep. So 
So we saw that music that is a very like short and sharp notes, which you might hear in a dance piece or in a high energy piece, wasn't successful for those individuals who had tried to use it for sleep. Whereas the individuals that used slow, long, sustained notes, they found it very easy to fall asleep to those pieces of music. So a good example would be if you had a piano and you put what we call the sustain pedal on, you press a note and it rings for a really long time. And what that can do is it can help us feel relaxed. Whereas if we were to get that same piano, take off the sustain, sustain pedal and press the notes very quickly, that might not be as relaxing and wouldn't be as helpful for sleep. And if people are practicing listening to music before they go to sleep, how long does it take to actually work? I'm guessing it's not a <laughs> working straight away kind of deal. Yeah, so that, that's an assumption that many individuals have. So many many of your listeners might think that you, know, you listen to music once and it should immediately work because it felt really relaxing. Why haven't I fallen asleep already? But when we look into the scientific literature, we actually see that it takes about 30 days for music to become an effective sleep aid. So it seems that there's some kind of interesting relationship between building an association between music, the bedroom, and sleep. Right, that's interesting. 30 days, I would not have thought that you need to kind of stick with it that long, which is good to know because otherwise, you know, it'd be so much easier to kind of uh, give up a little bit earlier when you haven't seen a result. We are Mm. almost out of time, but I want to quickly ask you, I know that you're currently writing a book on the science of music for sleep, and I think it's such an interesting topic. Is there something that you, you learned through your research that surprised you? I think what we mentioned before was actually the biggest surprise. I, I was just like me, I just like you in thinking that surely music should work day one, but that this idea that it takes such a long period of time for music to become effective surprised me. But the great thing about music is that post 30 days, music still continues to improve sleep quality. So we see that even up to 90 days, where people have been listening to music for three months, music continues to improve sleep quality. It seems that based on the current research, there isn't any limit to how much music could improve sleep quality with more exposure. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure.